Good morning, Mary Naz. Hey, we get to start today with a celebration. We have some folks that are uh, ready to be all in here and joining the church as new members. This is Rita and David and John, and um, we're excited about it. They've been here for a while now, but decided to make this the kind of the official day of becoming members. And so what they're committing to is to be a part of the mission of Mary Naz, which is to restore hope through the life that can only be found in Jesus. Yes. They're going to connect, they're going to grow, they're going to serve, they're going to give and become a part of not just what's happening here, but anytime we receive new members in the Church of the Nazarene, it isn't just a local church thing. You, they are joining in with Nazarenes that are now in uh, nearly 170 world areas that are worshiping Christ all around the world today. And so as a representative of the denomination, but of this local church, it gives me great pleasure to say to the three of you, welcome to membership in the Church of the Nazarene. So, as they're finding their way back to their seat, won't you stand and uh, shake hands with a few people that are around you, greet them this morning, let them know that you're happy to see them in the house of the Lord today.
as broken hearts declare his praise. For who can stop the Lord Almighty? Our God is a lion, the lion of Judah. He's roaring with power and fighting our battles. And every knee will bow before him. Our God is the Lamb, the Lamb that was slain. For the sins of the world, his blood breaks the chains. And every knee will bow before the Lion and the Lamb. Every knee will bow before him. the gates, make way before the King of Kings. The God who comes to save is here to set the captives free. For who can stop the Lord Almighty? Our God is a lion, the lion of Judah. He's roaring with power. stop the Lord Almighty? Who can 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 stop the Lord Stop the Lord Almighty. Who can stop the Lord? Our God is a lion, the lion of Judah. He's roaring with power and fighting our battles. And every knee will bow before him.
Sing a little louder. Sing a little louder. And sing a little louder. Sing a little louder. Sing a little louder. Sing a little louder. Oh, sing a little louder. Be 
voice to heaven singing worthy Lord of all the Lord of all on this day Palm Sunday when Jesus made his final entrance into the city of Jerusalem there were all kinds of people that were singing their hallelujahs and singing their hosannas with no idea what was in store for the week that was ahead but he knew and he knew that the call to follow him was going to be the same whether everything in our life felt like it was just all falling together and into place or maybe and especially the times where it feels like it's all falling apart and I don't know what kind of week you had this week. None of us knows what kind of week we're going to have in the week that is ahead. But we do know this. The call to follow Christ is the same. And the one who came and lived and died and rose again for, for you and for me says, walk with me. Let me show you the way. And we know today that sometimes that way is light and it's fun and it's time to celebrate. And sometimes it's a hard road. But it's the road, whenever we're walking the road that he wants us to be on, that is the best road ever. And the great thing is, wherever you find yourself today, um, he knows it. He's with you. He's for you. And hopefully today, all of us will re, I don't know, reaffirm that we'll, we'll, we'll dig in all over again today in our commitment to follow him, no matter where the path may lead. Let's bow. God, we thank you for this week, this holy week. And everything that, it, that transpired and everything that was changed forever because of the events of the week that lies ahead of us. It's pretty cool that folks, at least for that, that Palm Sunday parade, were able to recognize that, Hosanna, you are the God who saves. And even though so many people didn't understand and we probably wouldn't have understood it a whole lot better if we would have been there what all was what all was really happening when you gave your life on Friday for the sins and the sake of the world you did it because you loved us and today we know that we are a loved people you've proven that you did literally everything you could possibly do to show us how much you were concerned about us and we thank you for doing everything that was necessary to reconcile a broken relationship between an unholy people and a holy God. Thank you for the resurrection power of Jesus and for love that has the power to transform. Father, today, I pray for every person that's here and those that are joining us online this morning as well, that we will commit to following you, not just from the parade of Palm Sunday to the celebration of Easter, but to the dark journey, the difficult journey of going all the way to the cross with you. Take us deeper in that journey this week. Help us to be more mindful, more aware, more appreciative than we've ever been before of the depth of your love and the willingness that you had to give yourself up for us. Father, today, all of us have different needs. We have struggles, trials, challenges, difficulties that we face. And I'm glad that you said, hey, cast your cares on me because I care about you. So today, we just collectively, whatever those things are in our, our life, our family, we bring them to you. In full confidence and complete trust that you know exactly what needs to happen. And we can trust in your, your goodness and your love for each one of us. Father, we thank you today for the gift of your word. And I pray that as Pastor Greg comes to bring it, that it will not return to you empty, but it will accomplish what you want it to. Like we want to be, um, Jesus, the soil that in your, that, that's in your parable of, we don't want to be the rocky soil. We don't want to be where the thorns grow up quickly and the cares and concerns of this world choke out what we hear today. But we want to be the good soil where the word really takes root and then produces fruit a hundredfold what we could have ever um, imagined. We thank you for all of your provision of life, the gift of today, the gift of salvation, renewed relationships, the gift of each other, the gift of your spirit, and the gift of all the resources that you've entrusted to us. God, today, would you help us to be great stewards of that? 
of our money, our time, our energy, the best things that we have to give? Would you receive the offering that we're going to receive today and use it so that other people in Marion and beyond might come to know the hope that is found in none other than Jesus? We pray all this in his sweet, beautiful, powerful name. And everybody said, amen. You can be seated. My name is Jane Hill, and I grew up in this church, moved away for 50 years, and now I'm back. And again, I say my foundation was here, and the example that was set for me by Sunday school teachers, our minister, the other adults in the church, and I'm very thankful for that. I just remember when I was about 10 or 11, we remodeled the sanctuary and a lot of people were upset about it and blah, 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 we didn't need to do it. And I can remember praying in my room one day that, Lord, when I get old, please help me not to object to every change that the church wants to make. And the Lord has reminded me of that for the last few years. But overall, as long as God's word is being preached and I see people being saved, that's what we're here for. Giving my time to the church is giving it to God. And when I retired, I had to laugh the first few weeks. I wondered how I ever did anything because most of my church work was at night. And I was gone all morning and afternoon when I retired. I was working in the church doing things I had done before I retired, oh my goodness. But it's just a part of me. I, I can't imagine, you know, if God gave me a job, told me you want me to do this, I would do it. But um, I, I love people and the church is people. And I just wanna be there serving them, serving God. I love working in CR. I told the Lord if he brought me back to Marion for no other reason than to do that, that's fine. But I love seeing the people come forward, give their lives to the Lord, both at CR and in our morning services. Um, I really, that's what excites me, is seeing people saved and us working to get them into the church permanently. I don't think you're too old ever to serve the church. As long as God keeps me healthy, I'll be working in the church. And investing in the next generation is something I've thought about a lot. Any, you know, anything I can do to help with the teens, the youth, the kids, I'm willing to do so. I, I want to invest in them. And if you're brand new to this church, I would just say, I hope we're being friendly to you. I want you to get to know us because the more we know people, the easier it is to get involved and to be a part of the church. And I think um, I've sort of been a new person because most of the people that were here when I grew up aren't here now. There's a few that are. So it's been like I was a new person and my goal was get involved, get to know the people. And I think that's what any new person needs to do. Well, hey, good morning. Good morning. We really, 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 really appreciate you being here. Uh, every Sunday is like a new event, amen? And if you put yourself in a lane, put yourself in a position to hear and receive from God, sure enough, every time, man, it's going to be a bullseye. Amen? And a lot of that has to do with what we're doing up here through the songs and through the Word and all the preparations. We spent a lot of time uh, preparing for y'all to be here on Sunday. Y'all know that? Yes. And I hope you're preparing yourself as you walk through the door to receive God in such a powerful way each and every week, man. Don't get in a routine. Don't get stale. Don't think you're going to figure it out because every once in a while, man, we'll do a hard right. We'll change something and it's a little bit unpredictable. But if you come up in here prepared to ready to receive God, I guarantee you every time you walk in here, man, you'll get better and you'll continue to take another step closer to God. And that's our hope and our dream, man, that it's just not a gathering to where we fellowship with each other and we get caught up and we eat some cinnamon rolls and some coffee and all that. That's all well and good. 
But our hope is that you will encounter Jesus Christ, that you will uh, experience him anew and afresh, that will continue to shape and mold your life in such an incredible way that, man, we can really grab the attention of a lost and dying world because that's what we're trying to get to. We're trying to become more and more like Jesus, y'all. It's just not trying to be a good person, but it's trying to reflect a, a, a greater image, the image of Jesus Christ to a lost and dying world in dark spaces. Man, we need to be the light. We need to be the saw. And guess what? You know what God's plan A is to help change the world? It's right here. Y'all seem so excited to hear about that. So wake up, y'all. Uh, man, so today you get that opportunity to receive, to embrace that, to put some action to it. And I hope that you just won't just like receive information today. I pray that you allow it to truly penetrate into your heart and get deep down inside. And, and when God puts his thumb in your back and he'll do that, that, that you'll put some action to it, that you will lean into God. So today is a new day. God's got a plan for you. God's got a purpose. If he didn't, you wouldn't be here. Amen. But you're here. And uh, we're going to continue in this series. So Luke chapter 19, if you're looking for a text, we're, we're in Luke chapter 19. So we like for you to stand and sit a lot up here just to keep you awake. So uh, if, uh, if you can stand with us for the reading of God's work, Luke 19, starting at verse 28. If you have it, say amen. Can't be cheating looking at the screen. I mean, when you have it, you got to get it in your book, right? If you're still looking for it, say, hold up. All right, you got it. After Jesus has said this, he went on ahead going to up to Jerusalem. And as he approached Bethphage and Bethany at the hill called the Mount of Olives, he sent two of his disciples saying to them, go to the village ahead of you. And as you enter, you will find a colt tied there, which no one has ever ridden. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks you, why are you untying it? Say, the Lord needs it. That's a good response, y'all. Those who were sent ahead and went and found just as he had told them. And as they were untying the colt, its owners asked them, why are you untying the colt? They replied, the Lord needs it. Good reply. They brought it to Jesus. They threw their cloaks on the colt and they put Jesus on it. And as they went along, the people spread their cloaks on the road. And when he came to the place where the road goes down to the Mount of Olives, the whole crowd of disciples began joyfully to praise God in loud voices for all the miracles they had seen. Blessed is the king who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. Some of the Pharisees in the crowd saw Jesus. Teacher, rebuke, rebuke your disciples. I tell you, he replied, if they keep quiet, the stones will cry out. Heavenly Father, I pray today that you'll help us to catch this image. This triumphal entry, this uh, a uh, uh, praise fest, so to speak, of when you uh, came and you entered into uh, a land that would be forever changed today. Lord, help, help us to get a glimpse of that. Help us to be mindful, Lord, as we enter into this most holy week, Lord, of all the sacrifices and all the movements, Lord, that you have placed uh, before us for us to experience you in all of your glory. We love you today. We praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. John chapter 12, verses 12 through 19, gives us another glimpse of what this image looks like. Uh, it's an amazing scene. There's just so many times. It's the only time you'll see Jesus where he really elevates himself to receive praise. And, you know, every week when we get together, man, we're just practicing for heaven. Amen. So it's just not singing songs. It's just not coming together. But we're, we're coming together and, and we're giving God praise. And in John chapter 12, man, we see this crowd of people that, that enter and, and just wrap themselves around uh, Jesus as he enters. And they're screaming and they're yelling, Hosanna. And Hosanna is a desperate cry for help. Almost like if somebody was drowning to say, hey, save me. There was a desperation on the side of the people that would watch the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords enter into the city. Uh, it's a grand time, and honestly, we, we don't really know uh, who was all at the parade, y'all. But we know that there was a lot of people there, and if you allow me to use my imagination today, we're going to go through some of those, and we'll all probably find ourselves in one of those spots or not. But if you know Pastor Greg, Pastor Greg loves a good parade, y'all. 
I've, I've been a part of several of them. I know that's not part of my profile. I don't put it on my resume, but uh, it takes me back to the good old days in Zeno, Ohio, about mid-September at the old-fashioned days, y'all. Everybody was there, man. And back in the day when I was a kid, we used to gather right in the middle of, of Xenia. And, uh, man, it was a festival and uh, man, a lot of eating. Uh, one year, they changed it to the sausage festival. They, they quickly changed it back to the old-fashioned days for a lot of reasons, y'all. <laughs> but old-fashioned days, man, that was a place to be. And one of the highlights of that festival was they had this, uh, this parade, y'all. And I remember as a kid, whether it was my... Uh, elementary football team walking in that parade and just feeling so proud and just allowing people to cheer and people to gather around and man sometimes as being in the parade you would throw candy but but sometimes those dudes would throw candy at you and as a kid that was pretty cool y'all man the parade was where it was at I still remember kind of sitting around those times where I wasn't really in the parade, and I remember Central State Marauders, man, uh, the band would come down, and it would be off the hook, y'all. It would be off the chain. Everybody would be so excited, man, to watch this band come down, and they would show up, and they would show off every time. Man, it was a great time to be a part of that parade. Everybody would come together, and it was a festival, and it was a celebration. And if you saw somebody in there, man, that was a, a part of your clan, and you would uh, clap, and you would celebrate, and throw some candies or whatever. And, and it was an amazing day, almost like Palm Sunday. Palm Sunday was kind of like a parade. And Jesus, as we look at Jesus' life, he, he raised a lot of people up in order to praise him. All the things that God has done in your life and all the things that God has brought you out of, you know what that is for? That is to bring glory and honor to God. And this parade, this Palm, San, uh, Palm Sunday w was a setting to where those have, who, who have been touched by Jesus in so many different ways had an opportunity, man, to praise God as he enters in on this incredible journey to the cross show. I wonder who was at the parade. I wonder if Lazarus was at the parade. Because just a few days prior to this grand event, guess what? Lazarus was in a bad spot, y'all. According to John chapter 11, 30, uh, 38 through 44, Lazarus had been dead for four days, y'all. The King James said, he stinketh. That's dead, y'all. And we look at the miracle, we, we look at Jesus' encounter, and we know that Jesus, through his mighty hand, uh, brought Lazarus back, back to life. I wonder if he was at that parade. Because just a couple hours or maybe a few days for that, man, he was gone. He was in a place where, man, it was the end for him. And if we think about our own spiritual journey, whether it's spiritual or physical, we were once dead in our transgressions and sins. And when you uh, truly move from death to life, there is a different praise about you. Man, if you really experience that, I think for a lot of Christians, man, we got to embrace that. We got to go back and we got to recognize all the things that God has saved us from and all the things that he brought us up. And he truly gave us a life that passes all understanding, the life that we can really live to the fullest. And when we experience that, when we recognize that, we have a whole different parade experience. I wonder if Lazarus was there. <laughs> And as he was there and as they were receiving praise, he was probably sharing, hey, this is the guy who brought me back. And as a church, guess what? That's our opportunity to point people to Jesus who brought us back from the dead. Whether that was physical or spiritual. Most of us in this room don't know anything about being raised physically, but a lot of us know what it means to be raised spiritually. Ed Danner, a few years back, he knows what it means to be raised back physically. One afternoon after church, he went out and he was, he, he was hunting out in the woods somewhere. Started having some chest pains and started feeling a little weird and felt like, man, something was going on. So he made his way up to get some help. Got on the phone, called his wife and all this and paramedics found him. And on his way to the hospital, Ed dropped off. Was gone, y'all. Flatline. And through the grace of God, God brought him back. And if you talk to Ed Danner today, I guarantee you, I man, there's a whole different conversation that happens in Ed Danner's life because he physically experienced death to life. I guarantee you, Ed Danner would be at that parade. Both hands, 
both feet in the air. Thank you, God, for sparing me. Thank you for giving me another chance. Thank you for allowing me to live this life on what we call borrowed time. I wonder if Lazarus was there to, to point people to Jesus. To say, hey, I don't know about your physical issues. I don't know about your need. But this guy right here, man, he can do it. And we can look at all the needs and we can look at the situations. And a lot of times God shows up, especially when we get to that place where we recognize there is something in our life that we cannot do on our own. We truly need Jesus to come in and jump in. A spirit of desperation, man. This story was desperation. Hey, my family member's dead. God, can you help? Come on, man, do it. And just like Jesus, Jesus does it in his own time. Because they got a little impatient. Like, come on, man, four days. What, what's going on? And Jesus kind of says, hey, I got this. Sometimes, you know what? The best thing for you to do is get out of the way and let God do what he's got to do. And his timing, God knows what he's doing. And when he knows what he's doing in his own timing, in his own season, there is a testimony in there that, that will shape and change so many people around you. I wonder if Lazarus was at that parade. Y'all reckon? I think he was there. I think he was there, both hands, palm branches, giving God the highest praise. Amen? I wonder if, if Zacchaeus was there. Pastor Matt shared a few weeks back about the story of Zacchaeus. We'll find that in Luke chapter 19, verses 1 through 10. Zacchaeus, the tax collector. And a lot of times, man, when people are trying to find their ways to Jesus, man, there's an extreme measure. And a lot of times you get to that rock bottom state. I know a lot of people that found Jesus, man, in that rock bottom state. I don't know a lot of people that are on the mount, man, when everything is good and, and, and there's not a real need in your life where, where people are finding God that way. But a lot of people that get in the ditch find God all day, every day. Zacchaeus was in a place because he had lived a life and looking from the inside out, man, you would think uh, Zacchaeus had it going on. Man, he had the riches. He had the wealth. He had what the American dream says. Hey, when you grab all this, you made it. But there was something missing in his life that maybe wasn't the obvious. He was, he was missing fellowship. He was missing a relationship with God. And he was an outsider. I wonder if Zacchaeus would have been at that parade. Because that day, his encounter with Jesus, and Jesus said, hey, come on down. I'm going to your house. It changed for him. He became uh, adopted into the family of God. He was no longer an outsider, but he was an insider. And I wonder today how many people are distant from God. How many people do not enter into uh, the doors of a church because they feel like outsiders and they don't feel like they're good enough. Man, man Zacchaeus knows what that feels like, y'all. Because his circle, his, his, his social clique of, of other tax collectors, it was very small because he was not received in the mainstream. I wonder today, have you ever felt like you're an outsider? And you've only went so far with God because you just feel like there's not a place. Guess what? This preacher want to tell you today, there's a place for you. Yes. Doesn't matter your background. Doesn't matter what you've done in the past. Come. Come to God. He's coming to your house today if you let him. I wonder if, if Zacchaeus was at that parade, y'all. And I wonder if he was sitting there and he was all happy because he looked around. And at one time he was lonely, but he looked at the crowd of people and said, these are my people now. Let's get our praise on. I wonder if, if Zacchaeus was at that parade. I think he was, y'all. An opportunity to get before the King of Kings and praise God and lift him up, man, as he goes to the cross and becomes a sacrificial lamb that would change the life of thousands and millions and billions of people around the world. I wonder if he was at that parade. I wonder if blind Barmaeus was at that parade. Mark chapter 10 46 through 52 gives us this beautiful picture of, of what appears to be an interruption from God's people. Blind Bartimaeus, we don't know a whole lot about his background outside of he could not see. And he got word and he got wind, man, that Jesus was coming. And he said, Jesus, son of God, save me, change me, help me, help me to see. And the religious leaders, guess what? They had the audacity to say, quiet, cool it down, man. You're making too much noise. 
See, when you know God is king of kings and the Lord of lords, when you know that he can change you, guess what? Man, you praise God, you get God's attention any way you have to. And everybody doesn't understand your praise. See, man, we want it cool and we want it comfortable, y'all. Right? Man, we want our nice little praise. But man, man, when you really experience God, man, when you know God is coming and you refuse to leave different, man, you do whatever you got to do to get God's attention. And, and blind bar man said, hey, I'm not leaving here today. You can't shut me up. I wonder if Barmaeus was at that parade, y'all. Seeing, for maybe the first time, seeing the king of kings come down, the one who changed everything. I wonder if he was there. Man, you remember that day when you were once blind? When the things of God seemed to be so bizarre and so distant. And God through the Holy Spirit and God through people and, and the way God sets us up, your, your, your blindness became sight. You begin to see God in a whole different fashion. What at one time did not make sense, begin to make sense. And you lean into that and it shaped and changed your life forever. You remember that day? I guarantee you, uh, Barmaeus was at that parade, y'all. Because he could go back and he said, all the things that he tried, man, he thought maybe this was my life. And I was living in darkness, but no longer living in darkness. I'm living in the light. I have new life in Jesus. And best believe, I'm not going to miss that parade. I'm not going to miss that opportunity, man, to praise God. And for some of you today, man, you were living in darkness. Your life was a hot mess. I try not to look at anybody when I say that. And sometimes you got to turn some pages and you got to go back and you remember that day when you cried out to God in a loud voice and God met you exactly where you were at. Wasn't that a beautiful day? And you go back. And for some of us, man, the longer you've been in this, you, you, you forget that experience, man. You forget that impact. You forget that newness, man. You, you forget the miracle part of how Jesus brought you to himself. If nothing else, man, you got to wake up and you got to remember that one time, man, you were far away from God. None of this made sense, man. You were an enemy. You were dead in your transgressions and sin. And God loved you enough that he wouldn't give up on you. And guess what? You begin to see and God begin to work. I bet he was at that parade, praising God, talking to the others, saying, that, that's him right there. I don't know what your need is, but guess what? Look what he did for me. I can see. Woo. And isn't that what we should be doing, church? Your story, your personal encounter with God, friends, that's what makes you incredible. Whether you were blind or you were dead physically, spiritually, or maybe you were just somebody who never felt like you fit in. Guess what? God had a purpose for you. And God took you and he found you where you're at and he brought you up out of that mess in order for you to bring glory and honor to him. Every day you get that opportunity, friends. Y'all still with me? I, I think those guys were at the parade, y'all. There's some folks that probably weren't at the parade for a lot of obvious reasons. The rich young ruler, we find this story in Mark chapter 10, 17 through 27. The rich young ruler, friends, he had it going on, had everything he needed. Until one day, God put his hand on that thing that he loved more. And it says at the end of the story that he challenged him. He said, go and sell all your stuff and, and give it to the poor. And it said he, the man dropped his face and he went away sad because he had great wealth. Have you ever been there? Do you know anybody that God has put his hand on something in your life and you refuse to give it up? And you walk away from God. You know, that's part of the that's part of the deal, y'all, is a constant surrendering, a constantly giving ourselves to God. Amen? 
And a lot of times God puts his hand on things in our life that honestly, man, if we're honest and we're real, that we really love more than God. And for the rich young ruler, man, he loved his wealth more than he loved the relationship with God. And he failed to give it up and he walked away sad. How many people, friends, will not be up in a place of worship last or next week because God put their hand on something and they simply could not give it up? And they wrestle with that and they struggle with that and they try to manage. I want to encourage you today, if God has put his hand on something in your life, it's not because he's trying to deny you. It's because there's something that may be interfering with your relationship with him. And you can walk away sad or you can walk away all praised up because, man, you constantly surrender and you allow Jesus to truly be the Lord of your life. And when he's the Lord of your life, guess what? He's the Lord of everything. See, what happens is we typically are pretty good about giving God the bad stuff. Amen. God, take all that mess. Take all the stuff that's like not polished, but uh, this other stuff that appears to be good. I'm going to keep it. I want to tell you, friends, God doesn't operate like that. He wants it all. He wants a full surrender. He really wants to be the Lord of your life. He wants to be Lord of all. I don't think he made it to the parade, y'all. I think he wrestled with that, and I think he went away uh, sad, and it felt like maybe what he had was better than what God had for him. I mean, have you ever been there? A lot of times when God removes something from your life, man, you, you, you regret that, and you are a little remorseful, but God's always got something better for you. Amen? Whether it means, man, when you're getting uh, serious with your relationship with God, you know, God's got a wild way of messing with your stuff, man. Amen. I'm talking about wrecking it in every possible way, in a good way. Changing your friend circle. Changing everything. And you have a decision to make when God puts his hand on that thing that might be in competition with him. And you have a decision. Are you going to give it to God? Or are you going to walk away? And missed the parade. Ooh, I don't know if he made it, y'all. I wonder if the Pharisee in Luke chapter 18, verses 10 through 14, was at that parade. The Pharisee that, that stood in the back of the synagogue, that prayed a very self righteous prayer, such as this God, thank you that I'm not like other people. The robbers, the evildoers, the adulterers, and even like this tax collector. Self-righteous attitudes, friends. You know, it's hard to come to God, man, when you are still all about you. Amen? When you get to the place, man, and honestly, I think every Christian, man, Christians across the board, we should be the most humble people because what God has given us, we can never get on our own. We don't deserve it. We don't work for it. Man, there's nothing that you achieve. It doesn't matter how good you are or how much you invested or how much you fasted and how much you gave and all that. Guess what? It's a free gift of God. It's an unmerited favor. It's called grace. And to sit in the back and pray such a pompous prayer of saying, hey, God, thank you. I'm not like this poor sinner. And this poor sinner got it, man. He recognized he couldn't even look at God. He was so humble and he was so broken and he was so amazed that, hey, God, thank you. That you saved me. I don't think the Pharisee made it to the parade, y'all. You know why? He couldn't get out of his own way. Self-sufficient. Self-driven. I got this. Doesn't fit well with the relationship with God. And the Pharisees, man, they were all about, about the outward. But friends, they missed something inward. They miss the fact that this gift that God has given us, it's not based on merit of our own. It's based on how much he loves us and his unmerited favor. It's called grace. Friends, that that keeps you very humble. Amen. And a lot of times that self-righteous judgmental attitude that some of us get from time to time. Amen. You got to kick it to a curb because guess what? We're all on the same playing field, y'all. 
Doesn't matter your background. Doesn't matter what, what, what side of the tracks you came from. We were all dead. We were all enemies of God. We were all far away from God. And God loved us enough that he embraced us, that he brought us into this relationship. And if we humble ourselves to receive that, guess what? We will experience the greatest gift ever. Man, the gift that you cannot earn on your own, regardless of how good you are. I know some folks feel like, I'm not that bad. Guess what? Man, if you were without Jesus, man, you were as bad as all of us. Even when we had a dark past. You were going to the same hell that I was going to. And it didn't matter, man, if you were a good citizen. If you weren't a citizen of God, guess what? You, you were still on the same track that I was on. And the fact that I can sit back and I can praise God and I can be thankful. And, and at times, man, it blows me away. I can't understand why God would do that, that, that work for me. I don't deserve it. None of us do. And it keeps us in a place where we pray those prayers of, hey, God, thank you. Thank you. And there's no place for the self-righteous attitude in the place of the Christian. Y'all still with me today? Oh. I don't think he made it to the parade, y'all. I wonder if the elder brother of the prodigal son, I wonder if he made it. And I know that's a parable and I'm kind of using my imagination, but as we look at this story, uh, the older brother could not fully embrace grace. And it says the older brother became angry and refused to go to the party after the prodigal came back. And the father's like, hey, it's celebration time. And you know what? Sometimes, man, when we see people that, that drift from God or far away from God and they come back, we don't understand it. And we want to put rules on people. And guess what? At the end of the day, I'm just glad they came back. And the elder son of the prodigal, he just could not understand the whole concept of grace. I want to tell you today, church, grace is the most unfair thing you will ever experience. Amen. It's unfair. It's not, it's not a scoreboard. And you can look at people's life and it's like, hey, God, it's like, man, why are you fooling with that person? Well, he's fooling with you, too. And the grace that truly can't even understand it, man. It's so far for us. And a lot of times, man, it hangs us up when we look at other people's lives and we're like, God, why do you keep giving that person a pass? You know why? Because God loves them just like he loves you. And when somebody drifts away from God or somebody comes to God, regardless of their background, it should be, hey, let's have a party every time. Let's celebrate it, man. Let's get this, uh, this party started, y'all. There shouldn't be any judgment. There shouldn't be, hey, Father, I've been with you the whole time. Man, I deserve this. Man, you've always had the Father's love. And when you drift and you get away from God and you get back into that right relationship, man, that, that, that's party time, y'all. I don't, I don't think the elder brother made it to the parade, y'all. He couldn't understand. He couldn't understand the exchange. Why do they deserve it? And I don't. He failed to realize that God loved him just as much as he loved the other son. And he couldn't understand that. You all still with me today? Yep. Obviously, man, we don't know who was at that parade. We can use our imaginations and try to put the timeline and all that. Man, you weren't there. I was not there. But guess what, friends? I got good news for you today. There's another parade coming. And it's found in Revelations 7. Re Revelation, not Revelations. Revelation 7, 9 through 10. And it says this. After this, I looked. And there before me was a great multitude of no one that could count from every nation, tribe, people and language standing before the throne and before the land. And they were all wearing white robes and they were holding palm branches in their hands and they were crying in a loud voice. Salvation belongs to our God. Kind of saying, Hosanna, save us. Guess what, friends? We can be at that parade. I hope you're going to be at that parade. And every pastor in this church today, we hope that you make it to that parade. 
Man, can you imagine that setting? Team, if you come on up, can you imagine that setting? Man, we get another opportunity to see God face to face, man, and give him all the praise and all the things that he's done in our life. Man, we get that opportunity. And just like all these dudes uh, in Marion, Ohio, that pre uh, prepare for the popcorn festival, man, they leave their chairs on the side. This parade, friends, guess what? You're only going to be there by reserve reservation. Man, you got to make that decision to be a part of that one. Palm Sunday, kind of like a parade. We don't know who was there. But this next one, guess what? You can be there. I'm going to be there. Palm branches, <laughs> praises. Shouting to God in a loud voice. There are going to be some people, hey, man, you need to keep it cool. You need, no, God has done amazing work for me, and I'm going to let him know. And I get an opportunity, man, to be at that parade. I want you at that parade. You know, I'm not that naive to think that even when you hear this, and there's an opportunity, man, for you to really consider where you're at with God. I know there'll be some people that will miss this second parade. I know there'll be some people that, that will discount the invitation, that will disregard an uh, uh, honest and true relationship with God. And that, friends, is a sad day. I hope today, man, you make a decision to be at this grand parade. It's going to be amazing, y'all. It's going to be a celebration and a coming home and a rejoicing like you have never seen in your life. It, it dogs the popcorn festival. But, man, I want you at that parade. God wants you at that parade. And the thing is, that's a decision that you have to make as an individual. You can't come with the crowd. Unless you choose to come with the crowd. It's an invitation. It's a personal invitation. Today, friends, you have a great opportunity to be at this parade. Whew. It's going to be good, y'all. Will y'all stand as we sing this last song? I want to give you an opportunity today. There'll be some pastors at the altar. Maybe there's something on your heart that doesn't have anything to do with anything I said. Or maybe today you need to really search your heart. You need to allow God to, to show you where you're at. Don't miss the parade. Praise who 
we don't know who was at that parade but I guarantee you the folks that were there God had done something for them that they could not do for themselves they were a group of busted folks that realized that there was a God that, that could fix all the brokenness in their life I guarantee you the parade was full with those kind of folks who recognized and realized that yeah. Yeah. and guess what man there's some of y'all here today that know exactly what that brokenness feels like God's fixing it. He's changing it up. He's still doing it. He started a good work in you. It's not done yet. And he'll finish it until he comes back. It's an ongoing experience, y'all. But guess what, man? If you've never entered into a relationship with God, you don't know what that feels like because, man, you got you to gotta receive it first. You got to accept Jesus Christ into your life and then this whole process and this journey. That, that makes you available to be at that prayer. I wonder today, is there anybody today that wants to say that big yes? That says, hey, Pastor Greg, sign me up. I'm going to be at this next parade. I ain't going to miss this one. I wonder if there's anybody today who wants to go public. Man, you get an opportunity, man, to practice a little bit of that praising uh, by, by coming forward and recognizing, man, that you need God today. I wonder if there's anybody today who wants to make that decision. Is there anybody? Come on down. You got to come down, whoever that is. Woo! See somebody there. All right. Come on down, and that pretty lady in the middle aisle, she'll get you set up. Here comes another one. Woo! Woo! Thank you. What's your name? Steven. Steven, all right. Thank, thanks for being obedient to God. Matt and Wendy will get you guys set up today. We want to make sure you guys are, are getting uh, everything you need to continue to finish what God started awesome. in your life. Yep, 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 yep. You want to take them back, man? Church next week is a big event. Easter Sunday. And somebody you know needs to know Jesus. Matter of fact, somebody you know may need to be here next week. I hope this week, man, you are inviting people, you're sharing your story, and you are taking advantage of all the opportunities that God has given. And I hope you all come back next week. It's going to be off the hook. It's going to be off the chain. It's going to be amazing. We're going to come and we're going to celebrate the fact that, hey, Jesus is alive and well, and he's changing life. Y'all going to be here? Yeah. All right. If not, we're going to find y'all. Hey, thanks for being here. You are dismissed. Y'all have the most blessed week. Thanks for being here today.